In the cervical revolution course offered by Posture Restoration Institute, uh, we talk quite a bit about the vagal nerve, uh, or vagus nerve, sorry. Uh, the vagus nerve, if you've never studied it, it's a really, really interesting nerve. Uh, and it plays a huge role <clears throat> in a lot of our basically human processes, both physical and mental, emotional. And there's two branches of the vagus nerve. There is the cervical branch, which is a, uh, the, is a cranial nerve, and it comes right out of our cranium, and it exits right at the base, at the base of the neck. Oh, I'm sorry, at the base of the skull, top of the neck area. And, that can, and if you are in a right torsioned pattern, that area can get compressed because the, uh, the foramen, the hole at the base of the skull, which the vagus nerve exits on that right side, is actually right at the border of the, the occiput and the temporal bone, if I recall. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's where it is because I was really interested to see that's exactly where it is. Now, if you're in a right torsioned pattern, the temporal bone and the occiput will have a distorted relationship. It'll be stuck. And the, the occiput will also be moving down on the atlas, which is the top cervical vertebrae. So all that area gets kind of compressed. And that could also lead to some sort of compression on the vagal nerve and, call, and cause vagal disturbances. So the vagus nerve, when it is healthy, it is referred to as having high vagal tone. And high vagal tone is important to maintain healthy relationships, social interaction, feelings of safety and well-being. When vagal tone is withdrawn so that you have low vagal tone, just the opposite happens. It is low vagal tone occurs during the fight or flight response, during the sympathetic nervous system response, uh, in response to danger. So basically, if you cannot, if you cannot address whatever, whatever is in front of you with the social interaction network uh, and staying parasympathetic, if there's danger or there's, the stress is just too great, the vagus nerve takes away its calming influence and your fight or flight response kind of roars into action. There is also a third uh, function of the vagus system, and that's uh, playing possum, playing dead, essentially. You, you just lose all control of everything and just, you play dead, in a sense. Uh, that's probably the wrong term for it, but that's actually what animals did, or lizards, yeah, and animals. They would, if the situation was that there was a predator that's about to eat them, uh, they would just, play dead. Some predators will not eat dead animals. I'm not going to get into that part, but I will get into the idea of having vagal tone that is just kind of messed up. Because this is my experience. And I think it has to go back to this, this vagus nerve. One of the things that I've been most interested in in my own life is that over the years I've developed food sensitivities. Now, the, the, the things I've had the food sensitivities to specifically are cooking oils, any type of, especially like soybean oil, canola oil, cottonseed oil, all those types of oils. And they're found in a lot of packaged products, in a lot of, a lot of baked goods. They're pretty much everywhere, as I've become aware of reading food labels. I break out. I have skin issues from those types of oils. And really, anything else that is uh, a artificial food coloring, preservatives, additives, all those things make me break out. And, and they're not pimples, though. I think that they're coming from mast cells, which lie at, the, at your skin, kind of right beneath the skin. And when the mast cells release histamines or release their contents, I think they call it degranulization, uh, you can start to get little hives and rashes and things of that nature, and that's pretty much what it is. But there's a couple other things that also will make me 
I'm just going to say break out, even though it's not really pimples. Uh, coffee on an empty stomach. I'm not really sure. I think it may be from uh, too much stomach acidity, and I know the vagus nerve does play a role in stomach acidity. Sugar on an empty stomach. So if I eat anything that has sugar in it, not vegetables or fruit. Well, actually, no, fruit, yes. Anything that has too much sugar, and I think that would probably mean fructose in this, in this, um, in this way. I think it causes, perhaps it causes some sort of uh, elevation of blood sugar that my body is not going to respond well to, and that can make me break out. Certain foods that have high amounts of histamine, such as grapes, canned, uh, grapes, blackberries, raspberries, canned fish, uh, soy, fermented foods, chocolate, alcohol. All of those have high amounts of histamine, or sometimes foods can block the release of chemicals that kind of get rid of histamine. And I know this is a histamine issue for me because if I take an antihistamine, an antihistamine like a Benadryl, these things, I won't break out. So I know there's a histamine issue going on somewhere. I just don't know where the issue is really arising. I think it's my gut, and I think it's from vagal disturbance because the vagus nerve plays a role. If you have low vagal turn, tone, it can play a role in gastrointestinal disorders, food sensitivities, allergies. And really the, the vagus nerve, I'm sorry, those, those mast cells which are influenced by the vagus nerve, and they're in your, they're, well, the barrier of your skin, and they're also in your gut. Uh, they kind of bridge the immune system and the nervous system. Right? So the, the vagus nerve is a part of your nervous system. And the other branch of the vagus nerve, besides the neck, goes down into your gut, beneath the, 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 um, beneath the diaphragm. Now, the interesting thing is, uh, what else can cause vagus disruption or dysfunction? Well, an extended system, a system that's constantly living in fight or flight. So in postural restoration, we talk about extended systems, extended bodies, increased curve in the lower back, pelvis rotated forward, rib cage elevated, forward head posture, and a occiput, the cranium, coming down and rotating towards the back. So you have uh, occipital atlas. So basically, base of skull, top of neck compression. That is a fight or flight position. That's what you're gonna be living in. Your body is constantly in a state of tension. Uh, so I've always had a very high, very tense body. Uh, I've had ringing in my ears, tinnitus, since I was 13 years old. That could be another symptom of vagus disruption, that you can actually find that in the literature. A lot of people think that um, non-noise-induced tinnitus is from, uh, occurs when you're going through a very emotional or difficult time in your life. Um, I had a lot of depression when I was in around 13, 14. You know, the high school, early high school years, late junior high, those traditional difficult times. That's when I developed tinnitus. <clears throat> I have really never been around loud music, except a couple of dances, but that was it. Uh, supinated feet. Supinated feet is also part of an extended system. And that's a really fascinating thing, because that's what I'm getting to. When your feet are supinated, and you can never <clears throat> quite pronate completely and get your, your arches down, you're not grounded. You can't, it's, gonna, it's going to inhibit your ability to move side to side, which is what postural restoration restores. And I realized over the past, since April, the more grounded I've gotten in terms of getting my feet to sense the ground properly, so getting my arch down, uh, enabling my, me to feel my toes properly pushing off, the more I did that, the less I broke out. So I'm, it's not that I don't break out anymore. It's that when I do, the breakouts are much smaller. It's not like I would ever get a lot of them. I would just get, sometimes they would get real big, like red, big red blotches. Now when I get them, they stay pretty small, and they're not as frequent. So every now and then, I could have some canola oil, something with canola oil, and be okay. 
Uh, same thing with some of the fruit. I, could probably, I can have some of the fruit without breaking out immediately. Um, and that's, that's what I found really, really interesting, is that the more grounded I've become, and in order to ground properly, your feet have to pronate. That's really, really important. Feet have to pronate, because that pronation, the body can expand, which will allow your ribs to expand, which will unlock your body. Now your diaphragms can pump, and you can start breathing properly. Now, what's the connection with breathing? Well, in postural restoration, we, often, we generally concentrate on the exhalation, elongated exhalation. What does elongated exhalation have to do with the vagus nerve? It uh, causes vagus tone. So it's, it stimulates the vagus nerve. Now, stimulating vagus nerve is a good thing. Remember, we want high vagal tone because it keeps us more parasympathetic. When that vagal tone is withdrawn, we become fight or flight. So to get more parasympathetic and more vagal tone, meditation, a low, probably a low, uh, low inflammatory diet, low inflammation diet, pretty much don't eat the stuff, don't eat crap. <laughs> That's probably what it comes down to. Eat, you know, real food, whole food. Uh, but the exhalation is really interesting because as you exhale, your heart rate actually goes down. So there's a heart rate variability, and as you inhale, heart rate speeds up. As you exhale, heart rate slows down. So what are we emphasizing in postural restoration is always the exhale, getting all the air out, and then you hold it out for five, a couple of seconds, five seconds, and then you inhale again. So it's that exhalation calming effect, which is also what I use when I do my meditation. Uh, all these things together seems to have gotten me more grounded and I'm, I'm breaking out less. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people have a lot of complicated gastrointestinal issues, but the interesting thing is the vagus nerve is implicated in a lot of gastrointestinal issues. And what causes what? Is a gastrointestinal issue first causing dysfunction in the vagus nerve, and then it just kind of goes into a circle? Who knows? A and B, I don't know which one causes what. I just find it fascinating that the vagus nerve is uh, implicated in a lot of these things, and as I've gotten more grounded and out of my patterns and less tense and I can move better, getting glasses helped also because that decreased tension, I've been breaking out less.